Okay, hi everyone. So, for today, we will continue again our lecture session, but it's more on offline. I recorded this for you. Uh, chapter 6, Firewall. I think most of you know what is Firewall, right? But today, we'll try to look in uh, more specific how the Firewall work. Okay, this is our learning objective. <coughs> we find Firewall in general, what are the basic operation, architecture, and the problem of uh, current firewall. And then we'll describe how static packet firewall works. And then explain the stateful packet inspection, SPI for main border firewall. We'll see uh, what are the type of uh, inspection. <coughs> and then uh, in the second part of the firewall, we'll cover NAT and the proxy firewall, IDS, IPS, antivirus firewall, and so on. So for the first part of, of this video, we will cover until 6.4, 6.3, until SPI. Okay? Why is it? When you see here, the basic firewall operation, we have border firewall as a... Uh, Interface between ingress and ingress mean inbound and outbound traffic. So you are in internal corporate network. So most of the time, if you are the system admin or network admin, you are the one that responsible to ensure your internal corporate network are secure. So border firewall is one of the countermeasure or the protection measure you will take. So today we'll cover this about the firewall itself, which uh, having a role to filter the traffic from outside to inside or inside to outside. We call it ingress and egress. Normally in your internal corporate network, you have a lot of uh, devices, right? Uh, for example, your PC, hardened PC here. Why they call harden? Most of the corporate environment they already implement antiviruses, deploy all the host based firewall and many more. So you have hardened clients. Similarly, some of the corporate environment, they have their own server. So they harden the server. Uh, not only Linux server, maybe Windows server and many other server, which there are specific services offered. Email server, web server, like file server and many more. So how to ensure uh, the traffic from outside uh, securely enter this one and if attack packet will be dropped so the firewall will be act as the protection measure okay you see <clears throat> because most of the time from the outside user internet we did not did it know did not know who are the one that try to sending uh, a packet or communicate with our internal network what is the problem why we, we we need a firewall and then what happened to the firewall itself if a firewall cannot filter all traffic passing through it it drop packet it cannot process okay this is by default no if the firewall cannot process cannot uh, filter Maybe the filtering mechanism is not appropriately implemented, so they by default will drop everything. Cannot be processed. But this is secure because it prevents attack from getting through. However, it will be creates a self-inflicted denial of survey attack by dropping legitimate uh, traffic. Because they don't have a proper filtering, the legitimate traffic also will be dropped. So what, why you need we need a network if everything will be dropped, right? So we need to ensure firewall having a good inspection or a good uh, filtering techniques or mechanism so that all legitimate uh, packet will be go through, will be by uh, will be passing through the uh, firewall. So no false alarm, no false negative, no false positive. Okay, this is the basic problem when you implement the firewall then about the firewall capacity firewall must have the capacity to handle the incoming traffic volume 
if you let's say uh, you hosted or you <coughs> you have web server in your corporate environment or your internal or on-prem environment so you need to ensure that the firewall that you deploy can manage huge number of volume incoming traffic since you you did not <coughs> know how many users will try to access your server you to communicate with the server if you want your business expanded for example you need to support high volume of traffic incoming traffic but at the same time with that huge volume of traffic you need to ensure your firewall are able to handle it to filter some can handle normal traffic but cannot handle traffic during heavy attack this is normal uh, condition for firewall last time they can handle traffic but when there are some heavy traffic like DDoS attacks it's quite difficult to filter maybe some of them will be passed through and then they must be able to handle incoming traffic at wire speed you know the wire speed is very fast right nowadays we got 10 gigs per second some of it got 100 gig per second not megabyte only more gigabyte and gigabyte that need, need a very uh, high speed processing and also filtering the maximum speed of data coming into each port so firewall need to be uh, fast enough in terms of capacity and filtering and then processing power is increasing rapidly nowadays as a processing power increase more sophisticated filtering method should be become possible you can implement or you can uh, equip your firewall with uh, good processing power so they can analyze uh, fastly and they can uh, filter also very fast you can even have unified track management for example you, you call it SUTM in which single firewall can use many form of filtering including antivirus filtering or even spam filtering normally traditional firewall do not have this type of application enabled malware filtering previously uh, most of the border firewall only act as a network level firewall they just implement or inspect the header of the for uh, the packet not the application level but now with the, the UTM or unified track management they embed or they integrate together with uh, application level like the antivirus or spam filtering but you need more processing power to handle uh, the traffic when it involves more level or more uh, type of packet however increasing traffic is soaking up this increasing processing power in they will require more and more processing power and need very fast action from the firewall and then we have firewall filtering mechanism here there are many types actually for filtering mechanism however in this chapter we try to focus on the stateful packet inspection or SPI as a main um, packet filtering mechanism so single firewall can use multiple filtering mechanism uh, most commonly SPI with other secondary filtering mechanism so normally they have a main <coughs> mechanism like the SPI but they still can adopt other type of uh, filtering mechanism as a secondary filtering mechanism like uh, the application level filtering as well okay. First, we try to look at the, the previous uh, filtering mechanism. We call it static packet filtering. <clears throat> this was the earliest firewall filtering mechanism last time because they uh, did not require uh, more sophisticated last time. But nowadays, we need more, more powerful, more speed, and so on. So, what are the limitations of this static packet firewall? This mechanism examine packet one at a time in isolation so they require isolation part and then they only manage to examine one packet at a time only look at some internet and transport header so very minimum inspection two part only 
consequently unable to stop many type of attack because um, if the rapidly evolve of attack right the attack itself will exploit many other parts not only uh, transport header or internet header they can embed in many other part of packet so this type of uh, filtering mechanism already absolute since they are unable to stop many type of attack they can efficiently or effectively uh, drop this, pack, uh, this type of packet like the scene and act segment but some of the other packet will be uh, go through it look like the false negative inspect packet one at a time in isolation what mean here if it receive packet containing scene and acknowledgement set a segment this may be legitimate response to internally initiate scene segment then the file must pass packet containing this segment or internally initiate communication cannot exist however this thing segment could be an external attack some of the attack they export this segment so it could be sent to a rst or reset segment confirming that there is a victim at the ip address to which the sync act segment is sent however static packet filtering firewall cannot stop this attack since in the first part when the receive containing sync act segment they will be passed they didn't inspect other part uh, so the rules already there and then static packet filtering can stop certain attack very efficiently uh, certain attack only for example incoming SMP echo packets and other scanning probe packets and then outgoing response to scanning probe packets so can be uh, filtered effectively or efficiently packet with spoof IP address for example incoming packet with the source IP address of host inside the firm they can stop since they have the uh, IP table and also MAC address table can that can be mapped and can be checked packet that have con nonsensical field settings such as TCP segment with both the sync and fin bits set also can be filtered However, when look at the market status of this type of uh, mechanism or static packet filtering mechanism, you know that this type of filtering no longer used as the main filtering mechanism for border firewall, but may be used as secondary filtering mechanism on main border firewall itself. B, the first filtering mechanism will be using SPI, and then the second filtering will be using this because the cost for this static filtering very uh, low but the effectiveness uh, also low so they can become a support mechanism not the main mechanism to filter for example here market status main border firewall and screening router that use static packet filtering also may be implemented in border router which lie between the internet and the firewall <clears throat> still can be used in screening router doing static packet filtering however still need another level of border firewall we can't rely uh, <clears throat> in this static packet filtering alone because there are many attack can be passing through Stop simple high volume attack to reduce the load of the main port of the firewall. Uh, normally, this screening router they will stop this, uh, the simple high volume attack. Mean if they can reduce uh, <clears throat> the load because of the high volume attack will be stopped first in the screen router before go to the border firewall. Then the border firewall will be having uh, lesser load to process. Uh, traffic <clears throat> okay now we go to the second inspection type we call it as uh, stateful packet inspection or SPI 
nearly all corporate border files today use the stateful packet inspection SPI uh, filtering method commercially uh, most of the firewall nowadays implement or deploy this type of packet inspection SPI focuses on connection connection oriented TCP persistent conversation between different program on different computer so that they know the state of each uh, connection from A to B, B to A so that they can inspect accordingly this example most of the time packet state they are divided into two is either the packet is a part of connection opening attempt or packet is not part of a connection opening attempt Normally for opening attempt, they normally sync act, sync act, uh, fin act, right? So that to open or to establish connection first, uh, normally only 1% of all packet during the, the communication between uh, the client and server. For example, you want to uh, access your Instagram. First of all, you will establish connection from your client, your machine, from your phone to the server. So this considered as part of a connection opening attempt only one time. After that, when you you browsing your Instagram, uploading, commenting, and everything, this will become packet that is not part of a connection opening. And then this considered about ninety nine percent of all packet in the uh, normal environment because you already establish one percent for establishing connection open the up. Uh, opening attempt then other than that actually not a part of connection opening attempt just uh, the communication between <coughs> the client okay client and server for example or end user so for the, this first part one percent normally internally initiate connection opening attempt by default this is to allow connection if internally they will allow no issue because if this is a main border border file did, did not uh, realize heavily in internal if you have internal communication by default they will be allowed and then we will check can specify exception in the access control list for example from user a to uh, server a is it allowed or not although in internal so they will look the network or subnet group and <clears throat> so on in the access list access control list uh, if any prohibited connection are there then they will make if not by default will be allowed other than that for opening connection oops, sorry from external for example initiate connection opening attempt from uh, internet user to your web server for example by default, it will be prohibit connection. I mean, by default, it will be dropped. But it will go through the access list again uh, based on outgoing or ingress, egress uh, ACL, access control list. Can specify exception in access control list. If, let's say, they are uh, connecting to web server, which this type of IP address, for example, the IP address and the type of connection port 80 for example will be permit then if that packet permit or fulfill the rules for permission they will allow but by default will be prohibit or stop <coughs> that's why normally we just open the port 80 or port 443 by default will be prohibit but because of user using this connection, they can go through by default. Uh, but this is only for port opening. I mean, one percent of it. After you open the port, after the connection established, then another ninety nine percent will packet will be there. No need to uh, inspect this uh, part. Uh, that then they just inspect the another part. Packet is a part of previous permitted connection if yes just accept the packet so that if uh, in the 
left already permit then the, the remaining connection or the remaining packet from the source to destination will be allow accept the packet uh, but if the packet is not part of previous permitted connection they will be dropped because they didn't see any uh, established connection from that particular source and destination mean maybe the uh, packet or the packet that have opening attempt will be uh, already dropped so mean it's not allowed why the content of that packet should be allowed right so will be dropped also so that's why they have two type of packet filtering they call it state first connection attempt or opening attempt and not a part of a connection on an opening attempt that's mean the content so if the opening attempt already established and allow then all the content will be allowed if not by by, by right or by default will be dropped so no other further further inspection very fast and can manage high volume of traffic so this example of connection and socket and last time i think uh, we have cost name one cost name as socket programming socket programming is the program that uh, you need to do when you want to establish a connection between two parties for example so for socket programming that contains your ip address <coughs> Of source and destination together with the port or the socket you want to use for example port 80 here we're using socket for uh, web server to socket this one that your socket from the client so they will check the packet uh, will be checked based on this IP address and the port number Okay, because normally from the end user, a client, they will use random port to establish. But for the server, they will have specific port like port 80, port 2, uh, for, and port 25, the net, and also HTTP. This example, state for packet inspection for a packet does not attempt to open connection. Why this happen? Look here. Attacker spoof external web server uh, with this IP and port 80 then spoof a packet from 10.5.2.4 using port 80 and to our server using port 21.21 and then when go through the state full firewall you will check connection table is it any connection table uh, match or map if no they will drop and lock the packet because this is connection table they, inside the state firewall they have uh, the type of connection TCP or UDP then the IP what is the internal port and then what are external port see 10.5.2.4.80 no don't have and then the port for our internal client PC also don't use this port 2121 so how can they <coughs> allow so at the first establishing of connection already uh, drop the packet so that all other contents of that uh, particular connection will be dropped as well for this example Next, how about access control list operation? In ACL, is a series of rules for, for allowing or disallowing connection. Last time we have our UFW, Ubuntu Firewall, if you still remember. And then uh, in switch level, network level, we, we did also some configuration of the ACL, right? The rules are executed in order, beginning with the first. And then if a rule does not apply to the connection opening attempt, the file will goes to the next ACL rules. 
so they have step by step the rules they check uh, step by step the rules if the rule does apply for your allow uh, follow the rule and no further rules are execute so by default we'll try to look into which rules are fulfilled or applied if the file reach the last rule in this L, ACL, it follow that rules if let's say no other uh, rules are applicable then they go to the last one then they will follow the last if no other rules can be uh, map match do you still remember last time uh, in AWS so we have ECL right so we have uh, network level host level and also in VPC level okay what is ingress ACL purpose the default behavior is to draw all attempt to open the connection from outside I mean when incoming traffic or ingress uh, by default we will drop all attempt then all SEL rules except for the last give exception to the default behavior under specified circumstances. The last rule apply the default behavior to all connection opening attempt that are not allowed by earlier rules to be executed by this last rule. Normally, by default, the last rules are the applica applicable means drop to all attempt to open a connection from outside. If no other rules above are satisfied, mean or fulfill the packet when they inspect. No map, no other rules map. Then by default, the last rules that stated all attempt to open connection from outside are drop will be applied. This is the ingress one. For example, simple ingress ACL with three rules. TCP destination port equal to 80 or TCP destination port equal to 443 uh, HTTP and HTTPS then allow connection mean permit connection to all internal web server if they're using uh, web browser to assess our web server using our DNS web server DNS name if TCP destination port equal to 25 and IP destination address equal to uh, 60.47.3.35 then allow connection that means permit connection to a single internal mail server if they want to access our mail server using this port we only have one mail server here for example mail.newnt.edu.my uh, then we will go to check IP is uh, the DNS name, DNS and the IP map using port 25, then we will allow. Mean here by default, we have two rules. We already allow HTTP, HTTPS, and also email server. However, other than these rules, other than this uh, port, Will be disallow connection disallow all other external initiate connection this is default behavior for example if the user using ssh telnet file uh, ftp connection file transport protocol by default this will be dropped means at the beginning of the initial connection mean they try to open the connection they already drop so no other uh, packet will be allow from that particular resource source to specific destination so this is low cost because most packets are not part of packet opening attempt so they just first filtering the opening attempt this can be handled very simple and therefore inexpensively other than opening attempt they were based on previous uh, successful or not drop or allow Connection opening attempt packet are more expensive process but uh, rare. I mean, you need to inspect many things, uh, but only one percent of it. So still can consider low cost uh, compared to you need to inspect everything in every connection. Safety attack other than application level attack is really fail to get through the SPI firewall. I mean network level firewall normally will effectively implemented <coughs> when using SPI firewall. 
However, when it comes to the application level for uh, attack like SQL injection, uh, malware in host application is quite difficult to uh, inspect because this is more on a packet level inspection. In addition, SPI firewall can use other form of filtering when needed. So mean uh, a secondary filtering mechanism you can embed with other form of filtering. Dominance, the combination of high safety and low cost make SPI firewall extremely popular nowadays uh, in enterprise environment or in <coughs> the market. So that most of the vendor, most of the firewall provider, they implement or deploy this kind of inspection. Nearly all main border firewalls today use that full packet inspection. I think uh, enough for part one of firewall. We'll continue later with part two. Thank you and take care.